Joe. Joe on Joe is the only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hey, Joe on Joe listeners, it's me, Joe Slepsky. And I'm back and you're back. This is the uh, the quarantine re-releases of our original tracks going back four years. And I hope you're enjoying these as much as I'm enjoying reliving them, warts and all. I, I, uh, I, I think you can easily hear where I'm finding myself and finding what the show turned out to be. So I'm really happy to share these with you guys. Again, we pulled these back from behind the Patreon wall and I wanted to make them available to everybody during this time to share and give and listen and have fun, especially because G.I. Joe's back on YouTube now. So, yeah, so I appreciate that. And you guys uh, can always follow me at Joe on Joe Pod on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Let me know what you think of some of these early episodes, how terrible they are, or how funny they are, or how awful they are. And we're starting recording back up again. So reach out to me. Let me know, Joe on Joe Pod at gmail.com. Let me know if you want to join me for an episode. I believe we're going to jump into G.I. Joe Extreme very, very soon. So, without any further ado, here is the OG track from Joe on Joe four years ago. Enjoy. You are listening to the Joe on Joe podcast. The only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Welcome back to Joe on Joe. This is Joe Slepsky, and thank you again for being a loyal Joe on Joe listener. We're very excited to start the second miniseries of G.I. Joe. Uh, this one called The Revenge of Cobra. It means Cobra's back, they're angry, and they got some vengeance. Remember, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Joe on Joe Pod. And you can uh, always send me an email at joeonjoepod at gmail.com. Uh, and the best thing you can do if you like the show, tell your friends. If, you, uh, if you're part of a, uh, some kind of underground G.I. Joe cult, tell them. Say, hey, listen, there's a new G.I. Joe podcast in town. So we're going to get into the first episode, which is called In the Cobra's Pit. Yo, Joe! All right, we've got a brand new opening. So exciting. All new opening. All new characters. It's time to like up the G.I. Joe game. Like this, so I'm assuming this was uh they realized that that first miniseries was amazing and super well received. And now you've got just new character after new character being introduced. You have the Dreadnoughts, uh, you've got the Vamp Mark II right there, you've got uh the Water Moccasin, there's Flint, who you know, Bill Ratner is amazing, Lady J, uh Spirit. There's Firefly, there's uh, Mutt and Junkyard and Barbecue and Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes' new outfit, and you got Roadblock. Um, it There's the the Killer Whale, and um, we f- end up with the uh, the Patton-esque G.I. Joe salute, which is just great. Like it's They're coming out of the gate strong, saying we've got a whole new cast of characters. Everyone that you've been buying at Toys R Us, and uh, starting out on a dusky desert road. And... Very similar to, um, actually, well, there's, okay, so there's Optimus Prime. They have a giant red truck uh, that's carrying some sort of a laser, and the truck is totally Optimus Prime. Um, they're flying Skyhawks, which are fantastic uh, toys and were a lot of fun V2L craft. And again, we focusing, we're focusing on Duke and Scarlet, kind of the, the leads of the show, but very quickly we're going to be introduced to Flint and Lady J. There's Mutt and Junkyard. Uh which those are there he is flint that's our guy bill ratner making it happen um oh before we get too much further today's file card feature a little file card spotlight is going to be zartan the master of disguise because he is introduced in this episode remember a cobra is a snake and snake is sneak spelled sideways so the joes are driving this convoy with a weapon and the cobras decide to attack uh with a with an aerial assault of hang gliders now I've never hung glide myself. Uh, I've certainly played plenty of uh, you know Far Cry games where you hang glide, and I don't don't think they move as fast as rocket powered uh, Skyhawks. I'm just gonna say um, we've got some glorious shots here of Wolverines and um, 
Lady J f- driving a vamp. You get to see her throw her uh, spear, which is one, two, three, four. She just took out four Cobra gliders with one spear throw. Lady J is an awesome character with agency. Uh, and you just, you're just you just getting a big battle royale, and every single toy is featured. Everything is a toy, which is a huge contrast to the first series, if you guys remember, where a lot of the background uh, animation, a lot of the, well, a lot of, actually, frankly, a lot of the main animation that was being used, they weren't necessarily toys that were available because I don't think they had a, that many designed. So Cobra, a lot of the Cobra planes were very generic. Some of the tanks were generic. Now in this, you see a marked difference. There's the the, the Cobra Jeep with the uh, Stinger missiles on it, and you got Scrap Iron driving it. Everything is a toy, um, with uh, the exception of, it's funny, the only thing that's not a toy in this whole scene is the semi truck, which it's actually very much uh, looks like Optimus Prime. Uh, Firefly is flying a, a Cobra Trouble Bubble, which I had a couple of those. They were so fun. They just had so many little accoutrements to it. Um, the canopy opened, and you had the, the backpack engines, and you had a bunch of missiles on it above and below. Very unsafe, though. Um, you're, you're very exposed to people shooting directly at you in a Trouble Bubble, but they were fun. Uh, and then the Cobra Giant helicopter is the only other like non-toy vehicle here, which is pretty sweet. Okay, Duke flies a Skyhawk wearing a jump jet pack because it's not enough to be in a Skyhawk. I may need to rock it up and fly with a one-man jet pack. And here we go, Snake Eyes. You can see his first, the first appearance of his really awesome, amazing outfit. So good. He's got the 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 leg wraps and the and the and the. Uh, the, the bandolier on and the new face mask with the slits in it. Awesome. And there you go. Cobra Commander captured by Gung Ho. This episode, uh, as you will see as you watch it, moves very fast. Like a lot of stuff happens. This first protracted um, fight scene, by the way, real quick, that's the first appearance of the Crimson Guard. We don't meet Tomax and Zamot for a while, but the uh, the red Crimson Guard troopers are introduced right there. Here we have a return of the giant snakehead cobra airplane from the first uh, miniseries as well. Um, so the Crimson Guards, which are going to come into play much... Uh, they're, they're, the Crimson Guards are cool. Like They, they have a cool look. It's kind of like... and uh, Let me think the years on this. Yeah, they probably totally stole it from the, the red uh, Imperial Guards from Return of the Jedi. I, I can't imagine they didn't um, because the Imperial Guards were awesome. You saw them, they're like, all oh, these red robe dudes, that's amazing. So let's make some Cobra soldiers like that. That's awesome. So this episode's moves so fast. This opening fight scene is is got to be the longest sequence in the whole episode because everything else just keeps moving on pace. Let's go back real quick. We just heard Roadblock's very first rhyme which is the best. Roadblock's got to be one of the fan favorite characters. Um, he speaks in rhyme, and he just gave us the first rhyme of all time, which is... Duke and Snake Eyes, just you wait. We're going to chop Cobra up for bait. Cut to the swamps. Uh, we see that apparently even uh, four-star generals travel through swamps in order to get places. Later on, we'll learn that it's a swamp-based uh, military prison, apparently. But it's still pretty weird that the uh, the, the, the layout of the geography of the world they live in just goes from uh, that wide open mountainous area directly into a swamp, um, which apparently appears to be not very terribly far from where they're fighting, as as you'll see when these characters interact with each other uh, in a little bit later. And we're introduced to Zartan and his Dreadnoughts. And we all, the Dreadnoughts, of course, are they're they're a biker gang. It's it's the Sons of Anarchy you know, funneled before the Sons of Anarchy were there. They're Hell's Angels in the G.I. Joe world. And they're they're all uh, riding the little swamp skimmers, and they're terrorizing oh, these uh, generals. Torch, Buzzer, like and Ripper. Me, Torch. And uh, they've all got variations of English and Australian accents, which are hilarious. Uh, and Zartan's their leader. Zartan, the master of disguise from his file card. He's got too many aliases. His aliases are too numerous to list, and his birthplace is unknown, which makes sense. For this character, it makes sense. When some of these characters you get into, like you really can't figure out where they're from, but he's a master of disguise. He's done his whole life trying to keep people uh, on their heels. 
So Zartan can alter his skin color at will to blend in with his environment. He's also a master of makeup and disguise. He's a ventriloquist, a linguist. He knows over 20 languages and dialects. And he's an acrobatic contortionist and practitioner of several mystical martial arts. Now, very little is known of his background and origin, but most security agencies agree that he must have had European military Academ academy training. I'm sure you're a big hit on Halloween, Zartan, but it'll take more than a false face to fool my people. And later on, Larry Hama tied this into um, the Snake Eyes Storm Shadow Origins. Uh, I love that it's seated on this card of the, the, the ties that he would add to the comics, where Zartan was actually the assassin of the Hard Master in the comics. And he uh, studied with the, the Faceless Master, I believe. Faceless Master? We'll be right back. will return after these messages. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Back from Joe on Joe. Uh, so Cobra's kidnapped the general. We're back to the plane. And what's great, G.I. Joe is still in hot pursuit here. That original uh, action scene has not stopped. They continue to pursue Cobra, um, which is kind of cool. Because I feel like uh, so many of the cartoons, are they're just they're so wrapped around the commercials. And, you know, either commercials or cliffhangers and commercials where... Uh, something's going to happen and then, and then you come back and it resolves and then they move away. They move on to the next story beat right away. This is one, this is the fury road of uh, GI Joe episodes because they're still firing away. Now, now they're in sky strikers and, and with here, this is awesome. If you look, they're now in a desert. So they went from this like mountainous greenish uh, landscape where they had the laser, which Cobra stole uh the reason Cobra attacked, of course, they stole a um, they stole a laser that they're going to use in their weather dominator. Let's not go any further. This is also our first appearance of Storm Shadow. Uh, we all love Storm Shadow. There's so many first appearances in this. I, I want to. Uh, I could stop every second and say this is the first. This is the first. So we just see the Cobra weather dominator, which is going to be the, that's the MacGuffin of this whole miniseries. Is the Cobra has this weather dominator that they're going to use to change the weather patterns and, and hold the world for hostage, very much like the Mastiff Mass device. Fine work, fine work, gung ho. You and your men may leave the prisoner with me and Doctor. So Gassel. we're already at this yes, this jungle or swamp prison with Cobra Commander. Meanwhile, the Joes are still in hot pursuit. This is a very fast moving show. Gung ho has brought already got Cobra Commander at the main uh, industrial prison, which Cobra has already infiltrated in order to secure his release. Um, it just it's fast it, if you're paying attention you it just moves real fast and a lot of really great character face. moments um, Eddie's men. your mission is finished gung-ho and gung-ho's mission is finished he's told here. to return to base yeah, we don't all know it's sure. a base because they're all still pursuing Duster yeah. in the desert so we've got swamp we've got desert and we've got green mountain ranges all within 20 minutes of each other like you know i feel like how much gas could they still have in all those vehicles? They, they got us. It still got to be within the hour. Look closer, Warden. I know this will. And who smuggles you? in a basket into a prison? And no one looks into it. So a giant snake pops out of the basket and it gasses out the warden. You see Cobra Commander holding a. Um... Oh, and there's Baroness in her really good looking Baroness outfit. That's the best outfit. That's the outfit that it's all the black leather with the straps and the buckles and stuff. It's good looking. Um, Zozartan's going to gas out everyone in the unit, but you earlier what you saw was Cobra Commander holding up a rag in order to, to block the, the gas, the sleep, knockout gas, which is great, except Cobra Commander, you're, you're wearing a, a giant metal face mask. Like I'm assuming you have some kind of air filter on your mask. It's pretty funny. Here we have the killer whale. That was a road or rock and roll getting out of the killer whale. They happen to just run across in the middle of the swamp. The real general, half submerged in water. And Gung Ho is just like, I'm out of here. I got to go back. Uh, they ADR in that he has to, uh, you know, someone rescue the, the colonel from drowning in the swamp. But we're already back to another action fight. You got the dreadnought swarming around outside the prison, blowing holes in it in order to, to get Cobra Commander out. Uh, and we're just we're back in the action already. Just lasers firing everywhere. There's they're not wasting any time. Liberation is now at hand. Now you're gonna about to see one of the cooler toyetic aspects of Zartan right here. Oh, sunlight. I hate sunlight. 
It robs me of my camouflage ability. Yeah. Let's get back to the swamp. Such a toy thing. Because the toy, if you remember, for Zartan, he when you held him in light, he changed colors. The um the chest plates that he wore changed colors. He also came with a mask, and the mask was totally uh shipwreck's face. So as a very literal minded boy, he only changed into shipwreck. Like that was I was I was like he can't only be shipwreck. He, so every adventure had with Zartan had involved shipwreck, because when you put the face mask on him, he only looked like shipwreck. I wasn't have to, to have him look like Duke. Um, so back to Zartan. So now they're they're pursuing. Oh, this is great. Real quick, this whole sequence again. Return of the Jedi. This sequence is the speeder bike chase on Endor. They're just flying through. They're flying through the bayou and their Skyhawks and uh, the. The, co- the dreadnoughts on the, the swamp skimmers and it's shot like the speeder bike chase on Endor from Return of the Jedi. It's fantastic. So the man called Zartan is an enigma. Though intelligence reports that he may have received European military training at St. Cyr C-Y-R, however that's pronounced he is perhaps the most adept and clever master of disguise the world has ever known. He's an expert in makeup and disguise, ventriloquism archery. Archery, see they're tying in the, uh, the murder of the hard master. Mystic Martial Arts and is fluent in over 20 languages. And off to a commercial we go. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Now back to G.I. Joe. Zartan has the ability to alter his skin color at will and he uses holography and hypnotism to aid in his disguises. Now he became involved with the Dreadnoughts, a ruthless gang of bikers and thugs, and he set himself up as their leader. After a uh, failed attempt on the life of Snake Eyes for a terrorist leader, Cobra Commander, some years before, he eventually joined Cobra Commander's Cobra organization, and who employed the Dreadnoughts frequently for a number of missions befitting their raucous attitudes. Now, after several years with Cobra, Zartan later renounced his criminal past. He attempted to move away from the organization altogether, but he was sucked back in when Cobra Commander, who considered him an enemy, locked Zartan and several others he considered enemies into a freighter that he buried under a volcano, killing most of them. Zartan, however, was one of the few who were able to escape. So Zartan's really, he's really a mercenary. And um, he's always on like his side. And he's more so than Destro. It's funny. It's like they took they took what Destro was and said, how can we make a character that's even more Destro-y than Destro? And and here you have Zartan. Um, so real quick, the Weather Dominator just made a... Uh, hurricane like a cyclone whirlwind and it threw the tomcats the uh, sky strikers that the joes were pursuing them and just threw them around tossed them around like like straws in a hurricane and they've got duke and snake eyes prisoner um snake eyes of course stoic not saying anything uh but duke man of action snake eyes drop kick somebody and they're and what's really cool is they drew him and I want I'll, I'll give him credit for it. They drew Snake Eyes without his bandolier because they would have taken it because the bandolier is full of grenades and stuff. So they make it a they make an attempt to escape and it's aborted. And, you know where are they gonna go? But I love Such that they show him fighting. Spirit back. shall provide us with rare sport later. But first, Destro's talking about rare sport, which again goes to once again Cobra's got kind of like Cobra likes to. Listen, Cobra likes big giant machines that do crazy things to the world, and then they like watching their enemies fight each other in pits. Those are the t- like if you're looking to get a present for Cobra, if you're like, what can I get Cobra for Christmas? Something to do with their enemies fighting each other in a pit. You can get them like Rock'em Sock'em robots with uh, you know Flint and Barbecue as the uh, main characters. So you see what the battle was for early on is that. Destro took the laser core from the giant laser that the Joes were transporting, and he installed it onto his weather dominator. So now the dominator can control weather not just directly in front of their submersible desert base, but presumably all over the world. And now he is surprised by the appearance of Cobra Commander, driving home that they're money grubbing mercenaries. The Cobra organization is so complex that there is a Crimson Guardsman. It gets paid in gold, and we all know what else does our Dreadnoughts love? Dreadnoughts love uh, grape soda and chocolate donuts. Uh, Cobra is a very complex organization. Oh, not one more first for the episode. Cobra Commander in a Hood, which is such a cool look. That was a mail-away card. Such a great look. Uh, cut to the G.I. Joe base, which looks a little bit like... Uh, 
the toy with the giant gun in the middle. And I want to say that this Joe that they're talking to, I want to say his name is Scoop. There's something like, there's a character that's in the early episodes. I think it's this dude. They call him Scoop and they and he has lines and everything, but they never made him into a toy. Until recent years they did. but like, They never made him into a toy, but he's he's kind of main here. Like I don't know why they didn't use Breaker. Uh, Breaker. It's so weird. Once again, threats made via ultimatum. We got the we got the weather dominator. Once they once they launch a giant laser weapon out of a static base in the desert. You telling me the Joes wouldn't be able to kind of like triangulate that and figure out where the laser came from? It seems weird to me. The first one at least bounced off a satellite. So you're like, "Oh, it kind of came from anywhere." One other cool uh power play thing that we have going on here on the Joe side is Scarlet seems to be in charge with Duke being with Duke being away, which is pretty neat because you know they obviously set her up to be the the co lead of the show with Duke. So I love that. Without saying it, she's just running the show. It's great. And here we go. We're gonna catch up to what happened with the Sky Strikers. Can anybody hear me? There's Flint in this crashed Sky Striker. Basically dropped in the middle of a horror movie. Having absolutely just like he fell in a ravine or something, which is uh, could be a little awkward. Destro, once again showing his master of all uh, weaponry, is about to unveil one of the cooler little uh, little devices, which is a uh, giant root that once you drop water on it, it just grows and suffocates people, which seems really extreme. And um, quite dangerous. So what did we learn this episode? What did we learn? We learned that uh, Cobra has a lot of gimmicks, but pretty much the same modus operandi. They tend to they tend to favor uh, giant castles. And, uh, you know, in remote parts of the world, they like uh, high concept weapons of mass destruction. You know, they don't they're not going to settle for a dirty bomb or, you know, conventional weaponry. They need one very specific weapon that will cause some trouble. Uh, And then find like these. (laughs) Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, Duster may have learned something from... He may have actually learned something from their previous miniseries because he said that he seeded the whole uh, ravine leading into the uh, into their castle. He seeded them with these creeper vines. Now, I want to guess that's in anticipation of G.I. Joe sneaking up on them like they did in the mass device where they just kind of rolled up and they used a teleporter, but they, you know, rolled up and, and so this is kind of a... Uh, to, to avoid that happening again. Um, G.I. Joe will return after these And messages. we've also learned that uh, there is episode, no Joe, end to the amount of Joe on Joe fighting Cobra that Cobra is interested in. There, uh, here we're watching previews for the next episode, and there we go. The Joes are fighting again. Roadblock looks like Roadblock is, is alive. And that means we're going to get more rhymes, which is always great. And Duster's got his uh, weather dominator. So here, uh, thank you again for listening to Joe on Joe. I'm looking forward to watching this the the rest of this next episode. There's some giant hail balls, um, and you know maybe this will turn into a big commentary on global warming and uh, the environment. I think that's uh, I think that's ultimately the the message that Cobra was sending. So we're excited. We're glad you're along for the ride. Remember to tell any Joe loving buddies. Thank you for listening. Uh, Remember, now you're Joe, and Joeing is half the battle.